No Computer, and today I'm with James Brunton and his Robot X, and we're going to try and make some music and make this dance with it and all that stuff and beautiful and yeah, so let's go! <laughs> Oh dear, that's what happens when you play with fire. It never ends well. Poor Trisha, she's never gonna forgive me. So yeah, that was our little rendition of Robots, which is a song that James wrote, and you know, we just wired everything up to play. So yeah, James Bruton brought over his Robot X, which is actually an open source, humanoid, 3D printed robot that you can actually build yourself. So the aim was to wire this robot up to the modular synthesizer to make the modular synth control all of the different movements in time with the music. So what James did is he made all of the joints of the robot controllable by potentiometers. All the knobs work now. So this is head, hat the thing, whatever, tilting it. And then this is one arm axis. Rotation. And what these potentiometers do are basically send more or less voltage into the Arduino. So after that, we swap the potentiometer with a jack so we can wire wires straight from the modular straight in to the robot. So that meant the robot was being controlled by synthesizer control voltage. And then we're going to get the snare. And then um, it can be the other motion. Yeah, let me put it into the next one. Knocking the robot over. Whilst he was doing that, I was working on Trisha, which was actually a head for hairdressing training. I used it in a video a couple of weeks ago to make a seagull synth to try and scare the seagulls, which didn't fail, so it ended up turning into this monstrosity. Yo, what's up? I'm Captain Cypo Punko. Kind of looks like James. <laughs> It does, it looks like you a bit, with a beard. It's it a, in the middle. It's like if we morphed together and look nothing like this. And then I cut open the mouth, found out it was flammable polystyrene. <laughs> oh, oh, it's full of polystyrene. Oh, it's polystyrene. <laughs> Hollowed it out and then put some chattering teeth inside it to make it look a little bit more lifelike. <laughs> hey mate, how you do? Out. It's getting... And then you should be able to like squeeze this right down and get it into where it's uh, anatomically uh, correct. Uh, Look at that! Oh, that's vile. Uh, How's the coding going, bro? Can you code, Mr. Um, Man, the coding, with no mouth? Coding king! How do you speak with no mouth? Oh, look at that dandruff wiggling around, I'm sorry, it's going all over you. After that, I started putting the flamethrowers together, which were basically just big, posh lighters. They're not actually throwing liquid fire, they're just lighter fluid being fired out in large plumes. Look at that, so it goes, inlet for the fuel, and you pop a canister. This is the stopcock, which seals the reservoir where all of the gas is going to be. And then there's this solenoid where James is going to be able to control at the same time as the pilot light, which is going to be the end of this pipe, which is going to ignite the gas and turn it into flames. We did a fair bit of testing of these flamethrowers before we actually put it on the robot because we didn't want the robot to blow up. So uh, yeah, we took it outside to see if it worked first, which it didn't. Oh. Ah! <laughs> yeah, it's on. You got it? Oh man, is the pilot even on? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> there was even this part where I nearly got flames in my face. Ooh. <laughs> 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 Bro, 
come in, eh? Come in. I forgot which way to turn the button. Right, I'm just wiring in this relay board so we can test automating the solenoid and the pilot light and getting the timing right. So when I turn the knob on here, then uh, it fires them at the right time and then hopefully we'll get the perfect flame. Hey! Hey! <laughs> That's cool. Then it was a case of popping the head onto the robot and see what it looked like when it was all patched up and dancing. It was truly creepy. <laughs> So scary. We also wired up his guitar to one of the arms, so the higher the note he played, the higher the arm would go. This was done with a guitar note to MIDI converter, and then that MIDI converter went over to a MIDI to control voltage converter, which was then wired straight into the Arduino that was controlling the robot. Oh, all very long-winded, but it actually worked first time. <laughs> Yeah, it was a crazy fun couple of days. James has done a video on this as well, so go and check that out. The link is at the end of this video. The song, if you want it, is soon to be downloadable from both of our Patreons. I've been Look Mum No Computer. Don't be scared to try it. However, don't play with fire. It's pretty silly. Be very careful. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe. All that cheers, cheers, and I'll see you next time. Robots, we love robots, we love robots.